Cheese Grater is back. Big time. Hey, what's up, guys? MKBHD here. Yes, I brought an iMac Pro with me to the hotel room. Yes, I'm out here at WWDC in California. And yes, today, Apple did finally unveil or reveal the new design for the 2019 Mac Pro, the cheese grater. It's finally upon us. So we finally know what it looks like. We finally know what it's made of. We finally know what it costs, kinda. And we finally know what it's capable of. So this video is all of those things in one place, plus some personal thoughts of mine. Also, this shirt is a new one in the MKBHD shop. I'll have a link below the like button if you wanna check it out. It is back, everything's on sale, including all the other stuff. Shameless plug, it's gonna be once every two months that we do these drops now. So first two weeks of this month, we have this stuff on sale. Get it if you want it. All right, so the Mac Pro. I'm gonna be honest, it felt kinda like the Tesla 2020 Roadster announcement when they went through these specs because they're just absolutely ridiculous. And it, it ships this fall, so it's coming out before the Roadster, but let me just start with the specs. So the CPU will be anywhere from an eight core to a 28 core Intel Xeon. There are 12 DIMM slots for up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM. I don't, I don't know if you got that. I'm gonna just say that one more time just so you can digest it. You can fill all 12 DIMMs with 2,900 megahertz memory for 1.5 terabytes of RAM. And then it starts with one GPU, an AMD Radeon Pro 580X, and can go all the way up to four AMD Radeon Pro Vega 2 GPUs, which is nuts. Uh, no word on NVIDIA GPUs. It has eight PCI slots, four full size, and then four half size, up to four terabytes of SSD storage, and a 1400 watt power supply. So by the numbers on paper, of course, we can tell it's extremely high end. And then the name of the game really is headroom here, especially with that 1400 watt power supply. So you're giving yourself room to grow into adding components to it down the road as you upgrade it, you know, like a normal PC. And it's just putting down silly numbers, at least promising them anyway. So Apple's website is covered in crazy outrageous claims of performance over not just the old Mac Pro, but over the 18 core iMac Pro that I use now, which is already really fast. So I'll drop the link to this, of course, below the like button also. And then the design, of course, that's what people are talking about the most, and that's what we're kind of waiting to see, and it's kind of fascinating in a bunch of ways. Do you know what trep trepophobia is with, with the holes? I don't know about you, but this gets like awkwardly close to that. I'm just gonna throw that out there. But obviously the main comparison is to a cheese grater, which is the same as that previous Mac Pro that came before the trash can, but I'll take the cheese grater over a trash can any day. So this new cheese grater is about the size of I guess a, a normal mid-sized tower is definitely not as big as the old cheese grater, but it's way bigger than the trash can, thankfully, and it's all metal as you can see. Those arcs across the top are handles, and there's a third handle in the middle that you can twist and then pull the entire shell off as demonstrated many times, both on their website and by this sweet augmented reality demo they were doing, and that gets you full access to everything. There's two Thunderbolt ports at the top, along with the power button at the top and an LED light, and the back is just all your outputs from all those PCI slots. So that includes the Apple one that's built in, which gives you the headphone jack, two full-size USB ports, and two Thunderbolts. So clearly there's a lot going on with the design of this tower, but even on the inside, I think it's just as interesting as the outside. So there's a bunch of modules that'll be included um, to fit into those many PCI slots, and they're what Apple calls MPX modules. So there's a graphics card MPX module, for example, that they're putting the GPUs into, and that gives you Thunderbolt and HDMI out. And then third parties can also all chip in and make their own MPX modules, each one of which can take up to 500 watts of power. So Promise, for example, the company that makes that huge 96 terabyte RAID array of hard drives on my desk, they've promised to make a small MPC module that has a huge amount of hard drives in it for the inside of the Mac Pro. So you can put these things inside the computer. And there's another one Apple makes called the Afterburner card, which is essentially just for video encoding and video editing processing. So it can take a lot of the work of processing ProRes and ProRes RAW off of your CPU and will dedicate it onto that card by itself, which is amazing for people who use those codecs and is great for video editing. So these modules are really powerful and that is the kind of modularity people were asking for and waiting for for so long, having all those PCI slots to add into. There are uh, three huge fans on the front, taking advantage of that cheese grater design, and another blower in the back, so you have constant airflow going through the whole thing. But they've said it can be quite enough to be on your desk 
or next to you and not be a problem. So yeah, just it's pretty much a rebuild from the ground up like we've wanted. The price. So the baseline for this Mac Pro is gonna start at $6,000. Now the thing to remember about pricing like actual pro grade equipment, like the word pro I think is, is sort of overused. You know, OnePlus 7 Pro, what does that really mean? iPad Pro, am I a pro? Um, but really for actual professional grade equipment, that stuff is very expensive and it's clearly not for everyone. This new Mac Pro is of course a creative tool, but no amount of money you spend on a creative tool will make you better at creating. I think we all know this, um, but it will help with things like quality control and of course making things faster, which is what professionals pay a lot of money for. And actually that brings us conveniently to the one accessory, the one other piece of hardware that launched alongside the Mac Pro, which is the new Pro Display. This new screen is called the Apple Pro Display XDR. And XDR stands for Extreme Dynamic Range. And this thing is again a monster on the spec sheet if you know anything about the world of Pro Displays and reference monitors, or even if you don't. It's a 32 inch 6K HDR display. It's an LCD that gets up to 1600 nits of peak brightness and has a million to one contrast ratio, which is excellent for an LCD. And as you can see, ultra thin bezels and it'll come in a glossy version or this fancy nano etched glass, which is matte instead. And then it's of course, extremely color accurate. Of course, the actual hands-on and, and being able to put our own content on it is extremely limited at events like this. So I haven't seen my own videos on it. So it's hard for me to tell exactly how good it is, but Apple draws a lot of comparisons to the $35,000, $45,000 reference monitors that are used in these actual editing houses that are making movies and things like that. The sustained 1000 nits of brightness is definitely the hardest part. That takes a lot of power and a lot of cooling to get something like this to not overheat. So that's why you see the cheese grater ventilation in the back of the monitor matching the Mac Pro. And there's even a fan in the back constantly spinning that you can't hear but it's necessary. Starting price for this monitor, $5,000. And uh, to get the nano etched glass version that has the matte finish, that's another thousand bucks. So if you want that one, it's $6,000. And then with the super thin bezels, there's no camera built in. So that's sold separately. Um, oh yeah, and so is the stand. So the stand, which is all metal, it swivels and tilts and height adjusts and can even rotate into portrait mode. It's actually a pretty excellent stand. Um, it's not included in the monitor's $5,000 price. That's an extra $1,000 for that metal stand. Now that is a really easy thing to make fun of it for. I would do the same thing, mostly because the way they announced it on stage was terrible. They gave like the prices of $5,000 or 6,000 for the matte version. And then also said, by the way, it also costs $1,000 for the stand. Why would you do it like that? The truth is a lot of people doing professional video editing and things like that are using these displays that are mounted in place and they have stands already. So when they upgrade displays, they take them out and put them in the same place and they don't need to buy new mounts and new stands for them. So these people buy monitors with no displays all the time, but you and me, and people watching WWDC and most normal people just think of a monitor and a stand as together. So I guess what they should have said was, this is a $6,000 monitor, but if you wanna buy it without the stand, it's a thousand bucks off, 5K. Still expensive, obviously, and that's gonna look insane if you put it on the shelf next to other similar monitors in Best Buy or something, but it can look like a bargain when you're shopping it against the $40,000 reference monitors that it's actually competing against with pros. So anyway, all in all, there's no denying these two pieces of gear are extremely high end and extremely expensive. Like this is not something most people will get just like the previous Mac Pro. But damn, like I, you know, I was, we've been waiting for this for a while and they've made a lot of improvements to it. I mean, especially on paper and just in the design that we've been waiting for, for a long time for the Mac Pro. It's coming out in the fall. So I don't know, probably the end of the fall but I'm actually really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing how it'll fit into my workflow. Of course, that Afterburner card isn't gonna do R3D transcoding. It'll do ProRes and ProRes RAW, but I might have to mess around with that a little bit more. All this stuff depends on once I finally get it on my desk. I'm also a little terrified about how much it will end up costing. We should probably place bets on like how much the maxed out highest end config will cost. I mean, by the time you add a terabyte and a half of RAM, a 28 core Xeon, even the optional little wheels that you can put on the bottom, this thing is probably gonna go, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say $40,000 even. That's my guess. But the whole point is you don't have to buy the highest end one like you had to with the iMac Pro. You buy whatever tier you need now and you can upgrade it in the future. And that's the Mac Pro. 
we've been waiting for. So I'll take the cheese grater over the trash can any day. Either way, let me know what you guys think. This has been a quick uh, first impressions video. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.